From the tip of the tail of New Zealand, Te Reringa Wairua, to Bluff in the south, the Te Araro Trail is a continuous 3,000 kilometre track that connects settlements, townships and cities. But more than that, it connects the people of Aotearoa. The track shows off all kinds of New Zealand experiences, both spiritual and physical, and of course, our stunning landscapes. When he's running, you say, help. He's like, where, what? You know, I've always wanted to explore the ancient trails and walkways of our tūpuna, our ancestors, to meet the people who live in those small towns and communities along the way, and find out what makes us so unique and interesting. So, put the billy on, because I could be calling in to say kia ora. I'm on a long journey all over the country, and like most people who've trekked along these pathways, I'm taking in chunks of it one at a time to see what I can discover along the way. The Bay of Islands is a stunning part of our country, and both Māori and Europeans settled here when they first arrived in Aotearoa. It's an area with a bit of everything on offer, and the kilometre stretch of the Te Araroa Trail I'm embarking on will take me to the heart of the region. In this episode, I'll be meeting people who live for the bush, the hunters and the gatherers. Then I'll head to the townships of Paihia and Waitangi, cities separated by less than two kilometres, though they're worlds apart. It's a chance to meet some hard case locals and share a laugh, a song and a sail. This week, I'm fired up to be walking an historic trail that was used by our tipuna for centuries, long before the arrival of Europeans. And of course, meet some good fellows along the way and some others who have a much better idea than me of how to get from A to B. Cheats. You know, I've been doing this hikoi for a while now and it's just occurred to me that someone or some people have put a lot of effort and mahi into these tracks all around Aotearoa. One guy in particular has been chipping away at this since 1994. And a little manu has told me that he's close by. That same little bird said he was helping local sculptor Chris Booth repair a rock sculpture called a cairn that was built to commemorate the trail's opening. Oh, oh, See, good, Dad. Can I give you a good... Hey, got a beer in your pocket. Oh, yeah, I wish I did have a... Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Kilda, you want a bit of a hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, come in. Yeah, yeah, come in. yeah, yeah. yeah I'll yeah, uh, just get rid of my flash gears. Bare hands here. Your flash gears, that's right. That's it, right? It's all a bit of a major, eh? It's a major. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This sculpture was, um, it's a cairn. Yeah. And it was put in for the original linking trail on Tiara Roa between Waitangi and uh, Kirikiri. Awesome. Yep. And then someone came along with a four-wheel drive about ten years ago and pushed it over. So we're resurrecting Fantastic. the cairn. Because since 10, 15 years ago, the trail is fully established. And in those days, it was just one thing. And no doubt the guys in the, in the four-wheel drives just said, what's this rubbish? You know, yeah, yeah, bang, yeah. Bang, bang. I don't think they do it now. I Because they know. Well, the trail's got money, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this is an important part of the trail, eh? Well, this is Chris Booth's founding sculpture on yeah. the trail. A bit more there, Mike. So this area that the trail covers is quite significant yeah, in the well, fact well, well, well. that it was an old Māori trail, wasn't it? It was the, it was the trail between um, Kirikiri and Waitangi. Yeah. So that was good. We were joining two historic areas, so it was good for the trail. Second thing, it was forest roads, so we didn't have any money. <laughs> so all I had to do, I hired an Irish backpacker at Kirikiri, and I said, come on, mate, we're going to give you a shovel, and we put in all the signs, like, for $200. Because <laughs> we didn't have a budget. So basically, you were claiming land. Yeah, yeah. We for bringing... the good of yeah, yeah. the greater good. But we were also bringing back the trials. Yeah, because... Kilda. And, uh, you know, I had talks with Ranganui Walker and people yeah. like that saying, what was it like in the old days? And so, yeah, yeah, there were trails the length of the country. Of course there were. Yeah. You know? So I always saw um, Tiara Roa's job as reinvigorating yes. those trails that already existed, you know? Yeah, man. And this is the way they used to come. And if they went on the coast, that's where we'd go. And if they went across an estuary by simply waiting for the tide, 
and walking with the mud up between the toes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way we'd do it. Yeah. And so you get back to a pretty uh, basic experience. Yeah. And, you know, we always said you were manahiri within the area. Yes. And because you're walking in the way Maori used to walk and things, so therefore, uh, you were back and you were inside the experience, you know. Yeah. And you should be able to get those landscape stories and all of that should come as a natural consequence of simply Papa Tuanuku, you know, doing, yeah, doing it slowly. There's a saying in the north, Tiara Tafiti, the elders were saying, yeah. the trail of distance, yes. um, Tiara Roa, the long yeah. trail, yeah. and then the last one was uh, Tiara Hu, yeah. which I think in that context means uh, the path of, a, of, of the spirit. Okay. Yeah, 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 so okay. If you get those three things together, then you're learning. You're in a kind of, we won't say absolutely transcendent state, but you're just in, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, getting, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, your passion is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we need volunteers. <laughs> All this stuff's done through the goodness of people donating their time and a bit of cement and the truck and somebody brings some sandwiches and a cup of tea. Absolutely. The Kiwi Way, and what do we use? Number, Number eight, eight wire. wire. <laughs> but that's fantastic, eh? Yeah, well, we'll see whether it's going to work. So you're born and bred up here? I'm not sure whether I was well bred, but I was certainly bred up here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go under that actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to pull, pull hard, or I'll pull with you. Yeah. That's it. Now can you? Oh, wow, man. That's it, eh? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so, I'll put yeah, my yeah, elbow yeah, on yeah, there yeah. so we get some. And I got my elbow. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh man, that's fantastic. That's what we do when we're on the trail. Yeah. So your connection to these sorts of material. And to the Fenwa, I mean, that must be yeah. a big part of your existence, really, eh? I think it was like I was meant to be a human being that was born onto the planet to work with yeah. chips of the planet, you know, or chips of the Fenwa. Yeah. And most of the rocks I work with are rejected, yeah. like rejected children. And, yeah. uh, and I yeah. love working with those rejected stones. Like, these were going to probably end up in a sewage um, yeah. drainage area. Whereas I've selected them all, and and they've made this very special cairn, and, which uh, is on it. Exactly. You know, in celebrating the Fenua, I'm reading how was this rock a part of the Fenua, like, like, you know, and 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 of course it was part of a this volcanic sort of background that we yeah. that we Fuck have up, eh? yeah, right underneath our feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm always interested in parkour that I meet that have this connection to Fenwa and I feel this empathy with things Māori. Has that been your life? You know, I think it's something that, that all human beings have, right. but uh, many of us sadly have lost, particularly since the Industrial Revolution in the West, you know? Yeah. And thank, you know, I think it's wonderful that most Māori and Aboriginal people and yeah, most yeah, indigenous, indigenous cultures yeah. don't seem to lost it, whereas the uh, us people who our ancestors originated in Europe, many of us have lost the touch with, yeah, of, with, Fenua, with, eh? of the Fenua, and yeah. that's really so sad. OK, up we go. They're looking well on the way to restoring the kin. But I, I, I've got to keep moving. That's what the trail's like. These guys are fantastic. They're awesome. They've already worked on this for half a day, and I hope they succeed. I'll come back to check it out. But for now, tell it all calls. Kill that. The nearest campsite is miles away, so I've decided to pitch my tent in the Ngahere. It's been slow progress on the trail, and I really need to rest up for a bit. You know, I should have been in Waitangi by now, but I feel a bit like a crayfish. Two steps forward and two steps back. Ingari Keitapai, I've decided to stay here in the Ngahere and spend the night here like uh, my tupuna would have if they had a flash tent, you know? So I can't wait to relax in bed down for the evening there. But before that, I'm going to cook myself up a beautiful boil-up of, uh, of rice and, and lentils. Mm. Mm. See you in the morning. I'm walking the Te Araroa Trail to Waitangi, 
and decided to sleep last night in the forest, as my tipuna did, but with a touch more protection than they had. Gotta say, I'm missing the home comforts though, and my body's starting to show a few signs of wear and tear. As luck would have it, Tohi Ashby is a local Rongoa expert, and with my tired legs, just the man I want to see. Gee, that looks like a real treasure trove of Rongoa. Oh, yeah. It's a must. It's a tari tari tene roto te kahere. Apai. So this is really like your first aid kit, ne? Hi, hi. Must be tari tari hairi, ne? Oh, nga waka toa. Nga waka toa, ne? Para te tahi, mohe ne koe ki hako e wetahi rongo ina tō tika ki te mahi ya hane te eitua. Ah, hei. Ah, hei. Koe tēnā te ahua o tēnī peki. Apai. Aka tēnē? Ah, tēnē hei tūpā, ah, tēnē hei e tātara mō, ne? Mm. Ma tēnē te take i haere mauro to te ngahere i te kato o e ne e unu mo taku pēpi, ne? Koro pupungia, ka tuku e unu pēne te tīne, ne? Mm. Ko te mahe o tēnē ki te haka ngāwari tēnē taha te puku, tāia tū ki rano kato, ne? Mm. Ke ne whānau mea tāna pēpi ko pai te puta mai, ne? Mm. Ko kaukē mamai ana, nā koe tēnē te mahe o tēnē. Too much. No, koe tēnē te ahu o tēnā. Ki te anau he tō mate ki tō wāwai. Nā tēnē, tēnē rongo, tēnē me te tūpākihi. Mena koe makamoto tīna nga kato, e pāna ki te mamai, me wera o ngā koe roto te tāpū kaukau. Ka hakahari ngā tō waiwera, tuku ngā ke wera e ke puta ngā Nga mea roto te rau ki roto te tāpu kaukau, ngā pai ngā, ngā ka hau atu koe ki roto tō tāpu kaukau. Te pai, te wera, ka rongo koe a hau ana te mene ki roto tō tīna. So you bathe with this? Ai. Like a bath salt? Ai, ai. Ka rongo koe te mene, o, te pai, ngā tete anau, te mea te ingoa te mene. Pene te wokas mene koe roto tō tāpu kaukau. Eh? Where is this stuff? No, no, but ka rongo koe te pai o te rongo ne. Nga te mahe te rongo ne ke hau tono tu ki roto ngā whiwa kato ne. Ki te haka tika ngā whiwa. Nga koe tēnē te āhua o ene i tu mōmoronga. Ko ngā rau keta mea e tiki mi ana au. Ko ngā rau. Nga ka lingi ngia tu roto te tāpu kaukau. Nga ka mahi. Nga wetahi e mahi e ke ana au. Ko te mahi pani pani ne. Ko te tāia koe te mahi pani pani i roto i te tūpākehi, i te tātara moa, i te kawa kawa. Ka pēne wene. Nā ku wene mahi i te mea tari tari tonu ana, i te mea mena koa ka whara, e aroa kei te koro pupu wai, ki te tari i wānu rongo, ki te pani pani, nā ka mahi a tō mahi ki te koro pupu tō wai. E nā te wai āko e tāri ana. Ko tātou mate te tangata. Nā, ka mukumuku e nē roto tō runga wā au e nē. E ngā rī kue nei e nei? Ai, ko te tūpākehi te nē. Ai. Ka rākoa we tahi ngā rākoa o rakau no kone e me mūrua tu ki roto kato nē. Uuu, ka te haunga nē. Ai. Pai, pai. E nā mukumuku e nā koe runga tō ringa, e rongo no koe ka hau ki roto tō ringa. Mukumuku nē nā koe. Ka rongo koe ka timata te ahaua tu ki roto o ringa. Ai, pai te. Nā pēnana tō mama e mena, ko tō wāwe ki te mea mama e mena. Ai. Ko tēnā te mea me 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 wera tō he mūmuku tō wāwe. You know, I reckon this stuff should be marketed to some of our athletes. I can feel myself. Well, haere maina wetai e wako tangata, wetai e wako hoa e prei riki e prei mana. Ai. Ko haere mai titiki ki te mūkumuku i a rātou. Nā mitu tā rātou prei kemu, mitu tā rātou kemu nā ko hari magi te ino mai wa tahi rongo mō rātou. Kā rāwe! Nā wahanga mai tēnē mā. Kia ora! Wahanga mai tēnā mā, wahanga mā e mahi ngā wāhi e mamai ane runga tō tīna. Kā pai! Ka wai o mai wene, kia koe katoa, e tai koe ki tō kāinga nā ka mahi e koe roto tō tāpu kaukau, nā ka pai e tō 
to takotoro to to tapu kau 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 rongo kete ahua. Me ki te orgasm. A kore kote faki. Kara we. Nga mihi kia koe ahua. Mihi tu na kia koe. Mihi tu na tini kia koe. O tai me koe roto tini o tatu ngahere roto o ngati rahiri. Ai. Kia ora koe. Kia pai tahu tu no. Tina koe. Tina. Well, they say the trail always supplies you with what you need, and Tohe has left me a gift that'll keep me going. Kakite, I he tangata chino mohio. Well, I've got the good oil. I'm going to put it on my aching chinana. I'm going to break down my camp, and I'm going to go and see if those guys got that can sorted. It's hard to believe that this initial 22-kilometer stretch of trail opened in 1995, has evolved into a 3,000 kilometre trek that spans the nation. I've done a great job. See, the tikanga with this can is, is that you get a fern and you place it in here, and uh, along your journey, your hikoi, and it's meant to be good for your wairua. Yeah, yeah, nice. Anyway, waitangi, here I come. But before I get there, I'm meeting a man and some dogs who also spend a lot of time exploring the great outdoors. You know, I reckon our New Zealand bush is amazing. I mean, look at Tohe, gathering rongo in the traditional way taught to him by his mātua tūpuna. But I reckon there's another reason to go bush, and that is to get a kai. Because these lentils, they just ain't cutting it. Having never been much of a hunter myself, I'd been told of a spot a few locals like to head for a feed. A bit of bush renowned for its wild pigs. Now I'm keen to see what I can learn from local legend, Chunky. Kia ora, bro. Kia ora. How's things? Good. Pure, brother. Chunky. Tēnā koe. Ooh, all go, eh? This hunting business, how long have you been doing? Oh, been hunting since I was a little fella, yeah, since... I could hold a gun, I suppose. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a bit foreign to me, Abri. I'm, I'm more of a tangata moana, you know? So, who taught you? Or is it just something that uh, all the families do up here? My old man, he was always into hunting, not so much the pigs, but there was always people in the community that were willing to pass on their knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people I talk to about hunting, it's like an addiction, eh? You know, I, I talk to these guys, oh, we've got to go for a hunt, we've got to go. Is, is that what it's like for you? Yeah, yeah, it is. Once yeah. you've caught a pig, well, yeah. that's it, you're hooked. So what do you do full time? What, what's your mate? Uh, I'm a farmer. Oh, OK. If you're a farmer, there's no issue with putting uh, meat on the table. Oh, I give it out. There's a lot of people who can't get out and hunt. And there is. And they, they eat too. Bro, these kuri here, they have to be trained up, don't they? Yeah, it takes a lot to get a dog going. You need another dog or someone else's dog to run it with, but it takes a few, good few years to get a dog right. to catch a pig. So these dogs, they'd be quite well prized, eh? I mean, that's... Yeah, they're worth a lot of money. How much money? Oh, for a good going dog, it's around about five, six thousand dollars. Six thousand? I thought you were going to say six hundred. Mate, you've got a f that, those dogs are worth more than your truck, and you've got a flash truck too. <laughs> so, is, is there a special breed of dog? Is there a mix, bro? Of, because they look with respect. They're not show dogs, are they? Nah, well, I don't know. Everyone's got their own breed, and they'll all tell you that they're the best. Um, I like to run a hard dog. Yeah. Yeah, something that once it's got the pig, it ain't going anywhere. Do they get a hiding now and then, these cutty? Yep, yeah. Yeah, they get a good hiding. One of my dogs here, he's got over 20 big scars on him. And... So he's the man? Yeah. Oh, he's the dog? Yeah. He's the top dog. <laughs> so if they take off hoof off into the bush, do you ever find that they've hunted something else other than a pig? Uh, no, I train them from when they're young. I'll train them not to chase rabbits, yep. possums, before I train them to chase pigs. Yeah. And the Kiwi aversion trained, so every three months, I go in and see the dock guys and they'll uh, put them through a course to make them uh, avoid the kiwi. Fantastic. Does that mean you can go into kiwi areas and hunt for pigs? Uh, yeah. Most of the dock land, they will 
want you to provide a certificate to say that your dogs are trained before they'll let you in. I love that. Oh, bro, I've just realised. This fella up north, not far from here, he made me a knife, so I've got a knife. Oh, I've got a gun. Oh. <laughs> so do you shoot the pig? Uh, not normally. <laughs> <laughs> so do you stick the pig? Yeah, normally, yep. yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. I know nothing about this hunting stuff, but I tell you what, I'm keen to learn, and I'm keen to give you a hand if you're a starter. Yep. OK, bro. Let's get into it. I don't care, mate. It's all about getting a cake. Release the hounds! Come on, Hey, bro! If you find the pig, get around behind it, flush it out towards me, and I'll deal to it, cuz. No worries! Right? Bring it on, mate! I'm on the Te Araroa Trail and waiting for local hunter, Chunky, to round up a pig and double it back towards me. But the cheeky buggers tricked me and killed the pig himself. Mind you, the squealing from that pig uh, sort of got me a bit bothered. Not that I'd let Chunky know. Oh, bro, bro, I was all ready for you, mate. I missed my big chance. <laughs> I'll take that, brother. Well done. Oof. Ah, boy. I'll give you a hand, but I don't know what to do, basically. Sweet ass. Yeah, mate, I was all set, eh, really? I was, I was all amped and everything. But I heard all the, the commotion up there, and it, it's actually quite a bit different, eh? Because I'm used to, like, a lot of people getting the food at the supermarket. Some people think that uh, your burgers and your chops yeah. come from the supermarket. They make them in the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you're quite right, eh? Because your relationship with the cave that you hunt is quite a lot different to a lot of people, I would expect that. Yeah. Or your perception of it. Some people will think this is a bit barbaric, but it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah, come on, bro. Too much, all right, brother. Do you think many hunters are vegetarians? Have you met a vegetarian hunter? Oh, that would be a waste of meat. <laughs> you know, I have to say that when I heard that pig squealing, there was a little bit of aroha for this pig, but uh, it's gone now. I suppose you never hear a bowl of lentils squealing. <laughs> so what are you going to do now? Hang it up for a couple of days and then it'll be chops. Good experience, brother. Thank you very much. Kaki. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, bro. It's taken me a few days, but I'm well on the way to Waitangi, the birthplace of our nation. Over the years, the treaty grounds have been home to some pretty interesting dialogue between Tangata Whenua and the Crown. It's a special place that resonates with history, conflict, anger and joy. And the other thing is, this would have to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. Public perceptions of Waitangi might be based around the commemorations that take place on February the 6th, but it's also home to a vibrant community. Waitangi, where the treaty was signed in 1840, is a village that retains a staunch Māori population committed to the politics of rangatiratanga or self-determination. This area has a long-standing tradition of community gardens, and a new course being run here is seeing the locals getting back to their roots. Horticulturalist Helen Davis is keen to show me around. Oh, kia ora. Kia ora. You must be Helen. I am. Let's go. Let's go. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora whanau. I'd like you to meet Pio. He's here to give us a hand. Kia ora. Kia ora. OK, well, I'm all yours, fellas, so uh, what do I do? Well, um, we've started transplanting some of our kai over here, yep. but uh, a couple of the brothers have been down the beach to get some seaweed to help with our natural composting. Seaweed? 
Yeah, well, it um, helps the natural decomposition of the materials we've been using, such as the kaikuia, bracken, and uh, natural grass clippings. So it breaks it down? It helps it break down, and also it gives um, good nutrients to our garden, like nitrogen, carbon, and potassium. For the soil? For the soil. Oh, you seem to know a bit about this stuff, Cass. Well, that's why we're on the course, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, why are you on the course? Well, um, a lot of us saw it as a way to help our own families out yeah. and, and our marae. Um, you know, uh, veggies and whatnot, we all need, yeah. but unfortunately a lot of us can't afford to buy it every day. Sure so a lot of us decided to jump on this course just to help our own families and the community itself as a whole, I suppose. You know, bro, they reckon that when you're working with the whenua and, 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 and this sort of mahi, it, it's, it's good for the wairu, it's good for the soul. It's, do you guys find that? Yep, yep. Most days we go home pretty happy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's because of the mahi we do, and it does make you feel good when you're giving kai out to the whanau Aye. as they walk past or whatever too. Too much. So, yeah, it's a good feeling every day. So, bro, you've got some sort of uh, upmarket stuff here too. I've noticed, because everybody's talking about kale, eh? That's, oh, yeah. the, that's the That's the... Champion's food. Champion's food. That's it, champion's yeah. food. It's good for your bones. Um, it's high in calcium. Better than milk, bro. Yeah. Better than milk. You can have it raw, cooked, beautifully in the boil up. Beauty. So I'm yep. the newbie, I'm on compost. All right, yeah, you're going down to the right brothers over there. Right. They'll, they'll let you know everything you need to know about the compost heap. Compost, eh? Composting. Compost duty. Yes. So what do you do, just turn it? Well, we're doing, yep, we're turning that and putting it into that side. Yep. And then uh, we're going to put some more um, nutrients on top of that. Yep. OK. I don't know if you've noticed, but you've got all sorts of rubbish in here. There's somebody's newspaper, bit of flax. I mean, we can't... Have you, have you not checked this? You absolutely have. This is all part of that fibrous breakdown, you know. So you want a bit of brown matter, which is all your carbon, and that's including your newspapers, but we don't use anything with lots of gloss on it because it doesn't break down and it's got too much ink. Oh, hey, look, a worm! You know? Well done. We want the big, fat ones in there because they have all the castings, yep. You know, the worst thing about this is that out of everybody here, my gumboots are the cleanest, and that says it all, really. <laughs> yeah. So over into here? Yeah, flip it over and we'll work with that. Great. Good sprinkle in there. Oh, that was a good one. Is this something you'd do at home, bro? Oh, yeah. You should see my garden. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't do this for nothing. So it must be really good for your kids, eh? Yeah, Have yeah, you got man. kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if I oh, can get you some if you haven't. But, <laughs> but it must be good, eh, because they'll be learning about gardening, horticulture, eh? Oh, they love it. They love it. They prefer getting something from their garden that's grown yeah. than going to the shop every time and not knowing where it comes from and, you know, how it's been produced and stuff, you know? And our kids need to learn these things these days. I think you're on to a winner, <laughs> Cass. But, you know, the thing is, this isn't all new. This is what our people been doing for generations. Generations, mate, Even yeah. this whole area in the mm. old days, eh, I heard? Yep. This whole street used to be a garden, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, bro, so I'll, don't hold me up here. Ah, so good, mate. Smoke, I think. A couple more layers to do, mate, then uh, should oh, be us. Mate, I've been shoveling stuff for, for, for <laughs> all my career. <laughs> I'm on the last leg of my journey, just two kilometres from Waitangi to Paihia. Though it's just a short hikoi, the two towns are worlds apart. Paihia is an economic boom town built around manaakitanga, or hospitality, but both have got their fair share of characters. One thing I love about doing the Te Araro Trail is that you don't know what it's going to dish up. You don't know who you're going to meet. I mean, look at this guy. But he's got a story. Yes, man. Kia ora. Yeah, yeah, kia ora. Yeah. What is that? It's amazing, huh? Yeah, yeah it is amazing. Nah, it's a 
quite a new created instrument from Switzerland. They make them from year 2000 up, and yeah, there's only two people in Switzerland who make them. And I was lucky to get one. And everyone loves it, that's why I go out to play and share this with people. It's such a natural sound, eh, man? I mean, yeah, yeah. the other thing is I'm surprised because it has such a, an old, earthy presence. You know, the sound has, eh? Yes, touching hands. Yeah, yes, yeah. Good. I thought you were playing a Weber barbecue, and I thought, this guy's talented. Yeah, some people tell me, the man who plays the wok, you know, in Thailand, they <laughs> say, oh, the man who plays the wok. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you lived here in New Zealand? 27 years. So why have you picked this place to live? Oh, I don't pick it, it's just happening, huh? Ah. Yeah, no, I don't pick it, I don't know if I come here to live, it's just happening, huh? 27 years, I can still pick the accent, bro. I know, it's hard to get... <laughs> <laughs> I don't try to hard Who enough. Who cares? So it's I, beautiful. Yeah, I play music, that's my communication. That's your language. More than speaking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It has that Asian sort yeah, of sound. Yeah, many people think it's from India, you know. Yeah. It's a bit of idea from India, how this thing gets created. And there's an Indian instrument from South India called Gatham. Yeah. And Gatham is like a steel drum, only three tones. And yeah. he came year 2000 to Switzerland to get his instrument tuned in and then he looks like to wish to have more tones and two Swiss people start and work on it and create this new instrument. So do you think that original Indian instrument, this evolved from that? Yes. Definitely. So that's the tuakana, this is the taina, as we call it. Yes. Well, I have to say your music certainly captured me, bro. I, I, I love the sound and I love music. Uh, same like me, that's why I go out to share this thing and music is the most beautiful things I'm experiencing in life. We can go everywhere and share it with people. And with music is always good feelings. Yeah. So you play some instruments yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, I play a bit of guitar. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, here's a guitar. You have a bit of a jam. Let's Just, do it, right? Yeah, have a jam. With a permanent population of around 2,000, the town of Paihia has plenty going on. And today I'm heading to the local primary school to meet Harko Brown, who is teaching the local tamariki a traditional Māori game. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to get the tuakana to help you. And we've got Peel come specially up from... Where did you come from, Peel? All over the place. He's been all around New Zealand, so who wants to paki paki for Peel? Good to have you here. He's going to be awesome. Before the game can get underway, Harko's lesson starts off with the fundamentals. How to make a ball or key out of flax. Is this raranga? Yeah, yeah just like we did last time. OK, so you're all going to make one today. Is that cool? Yeah. 
I'm certainly no expert when it comes to harakeke, but Harko's got me helping anyway. OK, everybody go like this. We've got two pieces. Up. Nice. Very good. Watching, guys, those of you, just a big loop like that. So we've got a P for Pio, P for Pukana, and P for Perfect. Hako Brown's a local high school teacher, but his real passion is our traditional Māori games. You know, one of the things that saddens me is, because some of my best friends are Māori, is that I don't know much about all these traditional games. I didn't know there was so... I know, but I'm a product of modern so, education system. The games are really a small part, eh? No. Yeah, the main part is the philosophies and the things like making the key. These are the old knowledges and the use of harakeke and respect for it and, and our um, nahiri and the aro takaro, you know, lead into the games. Yeah. But, you know, making these to me, I, myself, it's just, it reminds me of my grandmothers, my uncles. It always brings them back and I see a key in the room. Yeah. And that's how I talk to my children. And that's where you got the knowledge from yeah, your tupuna? Yeah. My, my nana used to make key, but I was sort of lazy. But, you know, she was sort of master class. If, wow. if, I think now if I just sat with her a bit longer, that I would be, you know, make the really awesome keys that she used to make. Because we forget some of our kui and kaumatua were professors in their own oh. right, eh? Yeah. The older I get, the more I realise yeah. the knowledge they have and, yeah. and the way they put it over, uh -huh. the wairua tanga. Yeah. You know, all that beautiful feeling that you get when you think of your old people. Yeah. You know, I, I think now I'd give anything to be back yeah. sitting there you know, with her making a key. Now, even if you haven't got it, buy more. Well, all you really want is something to catch. If my uncles can do this in World War II overseas, we can do this. We can do the puna too. So these are puna. To me, this is about getting communities together. Oh. And that's why I push it, because I know, you know, our two puna are so peaceful, and their love for each other was enormous. Uh, and I mean, and they, for their tamari. Oh, huge, huge. huge. And, and their whenua, you know, they lose their whenua, but they keep this, the wairu is so strong. You yeah. know, and I wonder why don't they bring out the machine guns like they do overseas? It's that love, that aroha they have yeah. for other people. Yeah. And to me, this is a bridge between Māori and Pākehā. Just tell me your name when I... Jumai? The whole game is about the Māori tanga, you know? Two yeah. teams, basically, and they just try and outscore each other. But the whole whakaaro of the game is not really about scoring, it's about affing each other. Right. Yeah. The whole idea is around skill and whanauna tanga. What happens if you catch it in here? Yeah. And shall we have first up the five? The rules for hakariki are simple. Defenders get a point for catching the ball on the full, while the attacking team get a point for getting it to the pautangata in the middle. And of course, <laughs> I'm a natural. Yes! OK, hold it there. That's rua. That's 2-0. But we're going to have a second pautangata in. Right. They're back to back, they can catch the ball now. He's, she's with you. Oh, two of us two in here. Back, back to back. Back to back. back, to back. Okay, let's go. Well, I guess I'm living proof you can teach an old dog new tricks. And these youngsters have got my heart singing. And tomorrow, I look forward to learning some more new tricks from Paihia's queen of comedy, Miss Kihi, before I sail off into the sunset. It's my last day in Pai here before I hit the Te Araroa Trail again, and I've got a date with a lovely lady who's just returned here to her hometown. Yes, Miss Kihi. She's the queen of comedy around these parts, and she loves her morning walks. Kia ora! Oh, <laughs> tēnā koe, Miss Kihi. Tēnā koe. Heo. Si, pai te kite a koe. Rāwe te kite. Fela. Fela. And what are you up to? Well, thought I'd come and do my Hikai 101. A yeah, bit of exercise. Bit of exercise, a yeah. little bit of haora in the mix. Yeah. Thought I'd just come out and see the sunshine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Because this is your turf, eh? This is my turf, darling. Beautiful. And place. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I. So, um, you've got time for a coffee, have you? 
Hey, well, this is it, eh? I'm going <laughs> to take you for my favourite coffee. OK. I was just heading out to get me one. Yeah. This is the Diva 101. Yeah. The what? The Diva 101, darling. Have you got a personal coffee? I tell you, you can't live in this town without having anything personal. So we're going to go <laughs> right here. Hey, caramel latte. I want my own personal coffee, OK? How you, babe? How you doing? Yeah, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, darling? Not too bad, Diva. How are you today? Well, you know how we do. I'll tell you what. So you you guys know each other pretty well? Not too bad. <laughs> He's a regular. He's my darling. He's the Coffee 101 for me. Hey, babe. Now, I heard this woman has a personal coffee. She does indeed. Yep. The Diva 101. Yep. It's at Diva 101. It's so got to be good. Created by her and only for her. Why a diva? Oh, look, at the end of the day, you know, there's lots of tourists. Our great tourist here who, you know, how to make get their tiki coffee or to come and get a coffee now and then. And, ah. you know, the, the crowd is like zombie, eh? Beautiful zombies. And we just want to just, from the back, want to just say Diva 101. He knows oh, exactly what he's making. So it's just a quick little call out. He knows what the ingredients are. There's like 101 ingredients in there. Absolutely. And if, as long as I say Diva at the back, we'll pay him later. Yeah. And You uh, get your coffee? We get the coffee. And you're back on the road going for it? We're away. Cheers. So can you design me a coffee? Yes, that's what we're here for. Darling, we're going to design him a coffee. So tell me, like, what are you? Small, medium or large? Grande. Um, what's grande? Extra large. Oh, darling, that's taking it to the Nui. That's my tangy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go extra large. And that one's been around in the mix since 1840? Sounds good to me. Oh, look at his face. <laughs> so we're going to do the grande. Now, what kind of coffee? I'm thinking, what are you? Are you strong? Are you light? Yeah. Are you double shot? Um, yeah, well, I'm not fluffy. Uh, I'm double shot. Cream on top? Why not? OK, how about a triple shot, just to give him a little extra pizzazz? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> and uh, we're calling it the PO007. PO007. Choice, mate. And we'll put that one in the black book? In the book? In the book. So I'm local now? You're local now. The You're PO007. officially in the black book. While Richard the coffee guy gets to work on his first pure 007, I'm keen to find out why a wahine with the world at her feet in Auckland would seek out the quiet life here. One Diva 101 for you. Oh, darling. One PO 007 for you. Oh. Perfect, brother. Mmm. Wow. Man, that's like a feed. That's a proper feed in a cup. Especially when it's on your nose, Peel. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I tell you, that's the 101. How do you like the 007? The 007. It's always good when you get a little personal coffee, though, eh? Yeah. You feel a little special. It's beautiful. Oh, It's cool. beautiful. So, what brought you home? Well, you know, ko te mea nui ko a tātou whanau. Right? Ko taku mama, taku papa, Aye. tahi anō rātou, uh, hua māwewi, you know, uh, mate tīnana, eh, those ones. Uh, well, dad, eh, you know, yeah. he's worked so hard on Ingari the land. papa no, no, ara, ara no konai, ne, no tauranga. Ka hore no roto tauranga moana, tauranga tangata, ko raru kitahi. <laughs> and fabulous. And my mum's from up here. She's right. one of the ho whānau. The ho or the hows, H-O-W-E or H-A-U. Depending which restaurant you're in? Well, depending when you were born, eh? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were born in the dark, you're a ho. If you were born in the daytime, eh? you're a how. But um, the beautiful thing about um, coming back home, you know, I just wanted to wake up to some really nice waters, you know? Aye. Quality of life. Koi nā te mea nui. He ihi ranga ranga oroto. You know, it's just those little bubbling feelings that I get when I come home. Yeah. You know, kāre he kore, you know, ko taiake mai, taia tinana mai ki te whenua. Oh, mate, and when I get in that moana, hey, now who's proud, Mary? Yeah, and now who's rich? That's it. And I love it. You're on to it. Oh, I'm on to something. <laughs> Darling. Not on something. Oh, no, but see, dang. that's it. I mean, you're, you're a very you know, vivacious, wired, intelligent Māori woman. What do you think the secret to that is? Is it oh. papa? Well, you know, there's a bit of stress on sale. I got a discount the other day. <laughs> but um, no, 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 it is papa. It yeah. is that hono. It is really about that quality of um, story and right. kaupapa. And it's it's about getting in the mix with all the tourists, eh? You yeah. get your little one oh ones, then hokiana kita kainga, you know, go back to the tangis, bury some bodies, you know, whakanoa. Right. And then we go and um, launch some ducks or pātiki in the islands with the dock crews and all those other great crews that come around, the guardians of the Bay of Islands, the home people from Tirafiti, and um, we, we bring birds back from other places and try to do the rahui and um, reproduce them. So there's all different facets going on. Stuff's there's... happening here. Haramai, haramai. Because you were working here um, in, in tourism there. That's it. What is a must-see, must-do here in Paihia? 
Well, I mean, there is a there is a good place, darling, here, and uh, it's off the uh, record. And um, I mean, it's it's the place you want to start with in the morning, and it's the place you're going to end Lovely. up Lovely. in the end. So um, you can be on the top, you can be inside, you can be outside, you can take a picture, you can even wash your hands. So right. um, it's a good place. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, but darling, I wanted to show you something fabulous, eh? Right. So anyway, hey, those ones. Is that it? That's oh. that's just beautiful. You yeah, know that is beautiful, darling. No, no, no. We're going to take a selfie, eh? Get it? Oh, what a selfie! Right. Because I, ta da! Ah. Oh. What a toilet! No, that's the throne toilet. Kawa kanga kanga. Oh, sorry. Ooh, aye. Look at that. Yeah. And that's just one of the fabulosities, eh? I love to show people that one. Right. Just so they know everything that a tourist loves, eh? They want to know when you eat. Yeah. When we get there. And where's the toilet? Right. This is one of those places. You can have a coffee in here, you can do the wonders here, yep. you can meet people here. I've met a few. Have you? Oh, on the throne. Yeah. Everyone wants to start clubbing while you're in, in Pai here, especially during the day. Yeah. Head down to the old King's but if Road. I was to, um... And I mean, I tell you, all those bloody tourists, oh, they love it. They just love it when they come through to the Pai here. Yeah. They're Pai here, Pai there, Pai everywhere. And, the, and we uh... ensure that they get what they want every time they come here. Right. A little bit of Maori 101. Yeah. They really want to see what the outbacks are all about. You know, taking them to the mud eyes hey, okay, and everything okay, so like that. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. hey, darling, love yeah. your work, eh? No, I got you. It's, it's good to see you. Well, we haven't finished yet, darling. Yeah. Uh, we're still going to go and do a few more other things over here. This is Pai here, baby. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, no, we'll catch you. Uh, Pio, where are you off to? Come yeah. on. How's your 007? How's <laughs> you your... You know, this chick oh, needs her own show. Facebook me, eh? Instagram, darling, I'll see you there. May you wehi, may you lawn. Oh, got to love your work. Pio, matua kore. Who I? Oh, darling, this is what we're talking about. I mean, there's so much more going on around here. Come on, let's get it going. Let's just get it going. There's only one way I'm going to escape from Miss Kihi, by taking to the water. Leah Murray has kindly offered to whisk me away from Paihia Wharf to the yacht that they live on in Opua. There's a welcome lull in the conversation, but I'm looking forward to hearing all about their life on the high seas. I'm not the first person Leah and her family have given aid to, and I'm definitely not the most needy. Are we all good? Sure, very pure. Cameron, nice to meet you, man. Welcome Thanks. aboard. You can tell I'm used to this. Yep, yep. <laughs> now, I have to say, <sighs> this is more like it and definitely a bit of me. <laughs> One day she did this and Cameron says, there's a gust coming, Maya. There's a gust coming. I can see it coming. Yeah. And she goes, oh, I'm all right, I'm all right. The gust came and it blew her out to the side of the boat. Well, thanks for having me at your house. Oh, in your, our floating In your floating, floating palace. I think it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Man, I've been on boats, but I don't get on big yachts like this. This is so cool. Hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this all start for you guys? Has this always been a bit of a yearning to sail off into the sunset? Actually, we met here on a boat in Opua, and we, we motored yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, here in Opua about, what, 12 years ago? Yeah. And we sailed off on a motor yacht back to the States, and then um, we said when we decide to come home, we would always buy a boat and sail home. Yeah. And so we saw this boat and I went, she'll do. She's a good, strong girl. There must be heaps of standout stories of your journeys, but, um, you know, there must be something special to you guys. Probably um, going to Haiti. Yeah, oh, that, that was a big eye That was the big thing. In um, 2010, the earthquake happened in, in Haiti. Yeah. And they were asking for volunteers, and we started up a foundation under the umbrella of Endangered Planet called Sailors Without Borders, and they organised 1,200 pairs of kids' shoes. I saw that on TV once. To be um, transported to a college in California, yeah. and they did a big three day fundraising painting fest and hand painted each shoes and put little messages in them. Then they air freighted them back to us in Florida for uh, loading. That yeah. 1,200 kg of shoes. Me. We've done three trips to Haiti. Yeah. Now that we're back here in New Zealand, we're obviously getting our feet back on the ground with the business side. Sure. Uh, but slowly putting our works out that we can take our knowledge to the Pacific Islands. Yep. Really all based on education with kids. Yep. Um, we've done some work with the floating doctors where they would set up the labs 
um, with all the test equipment. Then we would come in and, with our knowledge with renewable energy, provide power for them. Yeah, big thing in the Pacific now, mm. eh? And, yeah. and, and there's a real movement there. I mean, because, you know, a lot of sun in the Pacific. Yes. Yeah, there is. You yes. know, you can't burn yeah, coconut husks do. forever. <laughs> what do you think your kids are getting out of this? Respecting nature, yeah. respecting the planet. No matter where we're from in the world, what skin colour we are, if we don't look after Mother Nature, she's not going to look after us. And just like we do with technology, better be careful, because one day she'll hit the reset button. This seafaring whānau has pushed my reset button, I reckon, but in a good way, especially as I haven't had to do any walking. The Murrays are typical of what I've seen on my hikoi, good people doing good things. What a great journey. For me, it's been wonderful, you know, following in the footsteps of some of my tūpuna. But the thing that really stands out for me is the amazing positivity of the people of this place. There's a saying when you're out on the sea, you can't change the direction of the wind, but you can change your sails to get to where you need to go. And I reckon that's happening in Northern. I reckon Northern's ready to fly. see more of New Zealand on air.